All right guys, so today's video is about animations in Bricks Builder using the built-in interactions to start animations. Um, but I don't know if you've used any of those, you'll see how they're a little bit overdone and they can look very, very clunky. Um, so I'm going to show you a way to tame those using a single utility class which contains all of your overrides. Uh, very, very simple way to manage uh, the animations and you can certainly copy and paste those between uh, editors and keep those settings. Uh, we're also going to look at a way of staggering those animations um, and something that I hope Bricks will do to make those staggering animations actually work better. Um, and I'll put that to Bricks as a request and hopefully you guys will support that. So let's just start by what am I talking about first? So I've got some dummy text here just so I can scroll. And as I scroll down, I get to these stars and they animate from the right very slightly. Now I'm going to show you if we do this by default with Bricks, what happens. Uh, I've then got a timeline I've created. And when that comes into the viewport, the items animate and each of them staggers. So the top one animates quicker and each one animates a little bit longer so that you get that kind of staggered feel on the way in. So let's have a look at how this is done first. So we're going to look at the uh, an editor here and we'll look at these basic stars first where I've got a basic container with some icons in it. Okay and then what I've done on that is I've put a, a viewport animation under my interactions at a end of viewport animation start animation of fade and right and left everything else as the default. Now let's have a look at how that works. If I scroll to that now, see that there? Super overdone because what it's doing is it's animating from 100% of the width of that element. So it starts all the way from the right hand side there. You can see we're even getting some overflow there, which is a different issue. Um, but that's just too overdone. Like if you just added this animation to a block or a set of icons or whatever, that's that that looks like a kid's project that doesn't look very professional at all all we have to do is add our custom animation class to that so if i add my custom animations class here hit the save and we've tamed it look at that just a very slight animation if we want to change the way that works i'm just going to unlock that class and I've got it set to 20 pixels. If we wanted a bit more, we can make it say 60 pixels, right? So instead of 100%, we're going 60 pixels. So there's a bit more movement there. I don't like that. Even that much is too much for me, right? I like it less. So I'm going to go say 15. And just got that really slight movement. I like that. I like that better than having too much. And this is also going to be the same with our timeline because it uses the same class. If I change that to 60 pixels again, and have a look at our timeline, see our timeline's now animating by more as well. So that one variable is affecting the distance that our animations are traveling, both horizontally and vertically. Uh, and you might want that much animation, or that might be just too much for you. Come back to say 15 here, And there we go, much more subtle, okay? So that's the first bit. Now, how does this work? Let's have a look at this uh, container again. I'm gonna take my custom animations off there. And I'm just gonna look at my container, the, uh, sorry, the interactions. And I'm going to put my fade in right there. I'm gonna set the duration to 40 seconds. You gotta put the S on. If you don't put anything there, it just treats that as zero. So uh, don't forget to put your seconds or milliseconds. So I want this over 40 seconds. The reason I do that is I want to have a look at what actually happens. So I'm going to have a look here, bring up my, my Chrome Dev Tools. You can see it animating there. Let's have a look at that block. So it's the actual block here. And what I can see, I've got my BRX, uh, BRX animated and my BRX animated fade and right. That is the class that we need to overwrite. So I'm going to show you where that is. So I'm going to take that back off. And if we go to, I'll leave it as the default one second. If we go to our custom class, 
So WP custom animations, have a look in there. We can see to animate fade and left. So we want to actually override that. We want to override our BRXE animate fade and left. And I've made that so that it's from this custom animations downwards, so down the DOM, and also on the actual element. So if the animation is on this particular element, we want it to apply. If it's on its child elements, we also want it to apply. It's up to you. You can just do it on the one element if you want to. But what we're doing is we're replacing the animation name. So the default bricks animation name will be the name that's after this BRX animate, so this fade and left. That's your default animation name. We replace that with one with our own prefix. My prefix is WPE. And that then we create our own keyframes. In our keyframes, we're going to tell it to translate by our variable of our transition distance. So bricks by default will translate by 100% of the width or 100% of the height. We don't want that. We want to specify that it translates by 15 pixels or 60 pixels or whatever you put there. So that's what we need to override. Now, once you've done this, I've only done the fade in uh, top, bottom, left and right on these for the moment. Uh, once you've done that, you lock your class because you don't want to be editing that. You want to keep it as a locked class. And then anywhere you apply this, this will work. So for example, down in our timeline, if we look at our items here, and look at that first item there. I've got my WP custom animations on there. And if we look at our timeline, we can apply this to the individual uh, element just by taking the class off it. So we can just apply it to that individual element. We can apply it to that class. So all of these items are going to have this interaction here, which is going to be our start animation of fade in up. If I change that to fade in from the right, so fade in right, save that, have a look here. Now look at our timeline. It fades in from the right. Okay. So that's pretty much all you have to do to tame these animations. Just find the animation name by setting the animation duration to, to really long. Have a look in the uh, Chrome DevTools in the, in the front end to see what the actual name of that class is. Override that class in your uh, animation CSS here. I do have to unlock it so I can view it. So uh, you override that. Um, uh, class to give it a different animation name and set your own keyframes. So we're, we're going to do this instead of the default bricks. So that's that bit done, right? Simple. Now we have a single point of truth, which is our WP custom animation class is our single point of truth, which we apply to any element that we want to override animations on. Okay. Now, the next part of this is the staggering. And there's something I wish Bricks would do. I'm going to hope, I'm going to actually put this to them and hope they actually do this. Um, and that is to put an index on each element that comes into the viewport, which I'll explain shortly. So if we look at these items here, what we need to do is go to the, uh, the parent of those items. So each of these items here has the um, uh, WPE custom animation, all that, so we can animate or change the actual animation. But it's parent here, which is the timeline. We also add WPE custom animations to it, and we add the modifier of custom animations dash dash stagger duration. Okay, that's the first one. So if we have a look at the stagger duration. I'll just drag this out a bit so we can see that a bit more, and maybe zoom a little bit. There we go. So our stagger duration. That's the stagger delay. We're going to stagger duration. Starts from here. So that's our modifier. And what we're doing is getting our animation duration, uh, setting our animation duration to the um, our variable of uh, animation duration x. So because we want to uh, we want to vary this uh, animation timing function. Uh, and then what we're going to do is that the nth child of one. We want it just to be the animation duration. Nth child at child of two, we want it to be a calculation. We want to set our uh, duration x, which we're using up here, up in the uh, duration up here, and we're going to do the calculation of our animation duration 
plus the stagger step. Okay, and now it's third one, it's our animation duration. Uh, uh, sorry, it's two times our stagger step plus the animation duration. Four is three times the stagger step plus the duration. So each iteration we're adding the stagger step as far as the duration goes, okay? And I've done up to 10 elements. If you want more than 10 elements, you're going to have to create more of these. And this is all come to where I want bricks to do something different to make this a lot better. So we don't need any of these. Um, now the delay is doing something different instead of uh, altering the duration it's altering the delay so let's have a look at that if i change that to stack a delay save that so it's delaying when they come in so instead of extending the duration so with the stack of duration they all start animating at the same time um, but the each iteration or each step, the animation duration gets longer based on the animation step. Okay, so that's the difference between the uh, stagger delay and stagger, stagger duration. I prefer the duration. I'm just going to put that back on there. Okay, so I prefer that. It just looks nicer to me. So they all start at the same time, but they just sort of take a bit longer as we get down the, the list, okay? So that's the duration. Now, the other thing you can do with this is because we're using CSS, our custom animations here, what we can do is have a look at those custom animations and look at what variables we're using. So we've got a stagger step, stagger delay, stagger duration, and timing function, right? What I'm doing is I'm using variable fallback. So I've got a variable called uh, the stagger step base, uh, animation delay base, uh, animation duration base, but then I default to 2.2 seconds, uh, default to 0.6 seconds, default to ease. Now this does not exist unless we specify it. Okay, so if I want to stagger the step taking longer, I would copy that variable. I would go to my Da, 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 timeline there's my timeline there and on my attributes i would add a style attribute where i add the stagger step base and i might make that let's make it really long so it's obvious i'm going to make it two seconds so staggering the step see how long that's taking to animate because it's taking it's adding two seconds to each one Okay, so we can override those variables using the style attribute. So let's say we're not going to stagger that by that much. Let's say we're going to stagger that by, say, 0 0.5 seconds. But let's go back to our CSS on the custom animations. What else did we have on our stagger? Stagger duration. Where's my stagger duration? Where did I put my, here we go, up here. So if I do my duration base, copy that name there, go back to my attributes for the timeline. And we're going to put a semicolon. Let's take a base of two seconds. So I'm going to start at two seconds, and then I'm going to keep adding 0.5 seconds for each element down the timeline. So the first one takes two seconds, then I add 0.5 seconds for each one after that. So you can have a base set up, and then you can override those using the style attribute. So if I get rid of that style attribute there, save that, I go back to my defaults. Okay? So I think it's a pretty cool way of doing it. Now, this leads me into what would I like bricks to do differently? I'd like them to do something so that I don't need to have all of these, uh, you know, nth child, nth of type, or nth child. The what you what they could do is when I don't know if they use an intersection observer or they use uh, their own code for this. I'm not really sure, 
But when you, with an intersection observer, when you have elements that uh, enter the viewport, you get an array of the elements that enter the viewport, so they have an index from you know zero, one, two, three, four, etc. What would be brilliant is if the bricks uh, enter viewport interaction added. So edit this is HTML. If it added a style equals, if we had say for example, it could be interaction. Interact zero, uh, that should be a variable. So I added a variable like interaction index of zero. Yeah, what did I do there? Sorry, I'm editing with HTML. So if I click it, so if we had interaction index zero on the next one, interaction index one interaction index two and these are the actual elements that enter the viewport so one two three uh in this case two elements into the viewport that would have interaction zero interaction one if three of them entered the airport would be zero one two three and then the next time these ones enter the viewport would be zero one two so the idea is that what we can do instead of having to have all of these uh nth of type and child we can just do a calculation multiplying our interaction index by the, in this case, we're using uh, a stagger steps. So if it was a calc interaction index times stagger step, we don't need all of those uh, nth child or nth of type uh, selectors. And we don't, we, we don't need to worry about whether we've got 10, whether we've got 20 elements, it doesn't matter. So I hope, if I put this point this out to the guys at Bricks, I hope that they can actually add that because that would definitely make it a lot better and a lot more controllable. So that's my thoughts. Uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll chuck what I have of this uh, class onto a gist and share that in the uh, comments. And if you want to have a play with it, um, go for it. But uh, this is kind of a at a point where I'm just testing this, just adding to it as I go, working out what works for me. Um, so I may or may not end up with uh, using this or I might end up with more of those uh, animation classes, I'm not sure. Uh, but I think this is an easy way to manage your, um, your um, uh, animations. And I'll show you why. I've got an example here. If I just add another section down the bottom here, so I'm just gonna collapse all of this and add another section down the bottom. And I have a, Intro. So here's an intro here. If I add that intro into my base there, let's get in the container. So all I've done is from my template template right library, I've just added my intro block. If I save that and have a look at the front end, when I get to my intro, it's got all the standard animations on it, right? And it's using the same animation class. Now, if I change my animation distance or my defaults, this will change. So all of the blocks that I use this on, whether it's media, whether it's an intro, uh, whatever it is, um, they're all going to animate in the same way. Um, and if you don't want it, all you have to do is go into these, go into those um, the intro block here, uh, go into the parts that are animating. In this case, it's the heading, and just get rid of your interaction. Just delete the interaction or just uh, delete that um, uh, animation and it won't animate. So, and that'll be across, because we're doing it on the class, it'll be across all of the instances of this intro that we put there. So I think it's a really easy way to keep them in sync and keep them managed, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, hit the subscribe, hit the like, and let me know what you like uh, or what you think it should be doing differently or doing better. Thanks, guys.